My name is Deepti and I'm a protocol engineer at Owen Labs. So, like Izzy mentioned, Coda is a succinct blockchain and we achieve that using ZK SNARKs. But what he kind of did not mention is that generating SNARKs takes a lot of time, right? And that is not a good, good thing in practical applications and it, it's a problem that uh, we solve and we have this really cool data structure that I'm going to talk about today. So I'm going to sort of explain a bit about how we use SNARKs. I know Izzy already mentioned, but I'm still uh, going to run through that a bit and, and kind of explain what the problem is and then talk about a naive approach of solving that problem and then a better approach and then what we actually do. So how we use SNARKs. But before that, a SNARK basically certifies a computation, right? But in Coda, we use uh, two sorts of computations um, and certify that using SNARK. One of which is saying that there exists a transition from one state of the blockchain to the, uh, to, uh, the other state, say S1 to S2, um, S0 to S1, right? And, and that is one way of using SNARKs in Coda. I will talk about the other way in, in, in a few minutes. Okay. So using this uh, SNARK, which we call the blockchain SNARK, how it actually works is that when we get first block, we get um, a proof saying, here is the transition from state zero, the initial state of the blockchain, to state one, right? And here's the proof, and you can verify it, right? So th this is basically the proof for the entire blockchain at this point, because we just have one block. When we get the second block, it basically comes with a proof that says, oh, here is a transition from the state one of the blockchain to state two, right? Now we have two different proofs, and which, which prove two individual things, and we kind of need to combine them, which is, which is what recursive composition helps us do. And so we compose these two proofs, which certifies the statement that there is a transition from state zero to state two. And so when you have third block comes in, which proves that this block kind of transitions to state three, you compose these two proofs to get another proof that would say, hey, this, this is a transition from state zero to state three, right? So this is how you kind of recursively um, compose all the proofs that you, that you get. And finally, there's this one blockchain snark that sort of proves this entire tr transition from state zero to state three, right? And all the transactions and the consensus mechanism is all baked into this proof. So a block consists of this database of accounts, which is Merkle tree, and the consensus information. And it also consists of this another proof, another snark we call transaction snark, and a transaction snark basically certifies application of these transactions onto the database. What a transaction snark says in this diagram here is that here is, I'm going to certify that after applying a few set of transactions on database zero, I get database n. That's, that's my transaction snark, okay? And this transaction snark is sort of built using multiple transaction snark, which certify application of individual transactions. So there's like one transaction snark that certifies I've applied one transaction, and there's another transaction snark that certifies I've applied second transaction, and kind of use all of these transactions to finally get one um, big but still small. <laughs> yeah, one final transaction snark that certifies application of all of these transactions. The problem here is that generating one transaction, one snark takes 30 seconds. And so the naive way of doing, uh, generating this one big yet small snark is a naive approach that I'm gonna talk about. Okay, and which is to sequentially chain these transaction snark in a similar way how we chained blockchain snarks, right? You get, um, I have some illustration, maybe that'll help you understand. So. Let's say this is transaction snark that certifies application of one transaction. Um, so what it basically means is that when a transaction is applied to DB0, 
you get DB1. And you have another transaction snark which says, I have, um, which, which certifies that application of another transaction on DB1 gives me DB2, right? And then I combine these two, compose these two proofs to say that I have two transactions that when applied to DB0, I get DB2. This is very similar to how we uh, compose blockchain snarks, right? And you get a third transaction snark. You combine the third transaction snark with, with this composed snark and produce another transaction snark that certifies from zero to three. And on and on and on. Finally, you get, get to the last transaction snark and you compose that with the previous big snark and finally get to this one snark that says, that certifies that application of all these transactions on DB0 gets me to DBN, right? It, this is very similar to how uh, blockchain snarks are composed. The problem with this is that it's linear. So it's going to take C times N, where C is the time taken to compute, to generate one snark, which is 30 seconds. And this is going to cause low throughput, right? Because you're, you're going to take 30 seconds, 30 seconds, and 30 seconds. Not a good idea. Which gets us to a better approach, as you can see in the hint. Let's take a step back and see why does it have to be sequential? Maybe that'll get us to this better approach, right? So if you look at this diagram, you see these individual transaction snark, they're not dependent on each other at all which means you can generate them in parallel, right? And so you don't have to wait to like, um, you know, to, to, to these two snarks are com composed and then composed with the next snark and, and so on, that statement. And so what we do is generate snarks in parallel. And these are the application of individual transactions. So it's, it's going to take from DB0 to DB1, DB1 to DB2, and, and so on and on, DBN minus 1 to DBN. All of these snarks, when you apply to these individual, um, all of these individual transactions when you apply, right? And you prove them parallelly. Cool. Now you need a way to compose all of these transactions because you need one transaction snark in the end. So what you do is, sort of recursively, again, compose these individual snarks. So you take two of these snarks and compose them and get to the next level, right? And so on, on the second level, you get another transaction snark that kind of certifies um, um, database zero to database two, right? You keep doing that for all the transactions, all the transaction snarks. And kind of you keep doing this on and on and you have a nice binary tree that will get you to the final transaction snark that what you actually need. So the time taken to compute this, as, as this is like a nice tree structure, you see that it's log n times c because all of these transactions can be computed in parallel, which means that to, to generate the transaction snark on one level, you just need c seconds, which is 30 seconds. Um, and then using those proofs, you, 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 you compose those proofs to get, get <coughs> further up the tree and finally reach uh, the, the, the transaction snark that you need. Assuming there are enough cores, these applications of transactions have to be snarked, then you kind of need to have enough cores to do that. So that's an assumption. What this allows us is to have a higher throughput, right? Which is like the whole goal of this, this entire process. However, it's still sort of sequential, right, with respect to the level, because you kind of have to wait to, for 30 seconds till all of these are done, and only then you can proceed to the next level, uh, and then wait for 30 seconds more, and then proceed to the next level. So it's still sequential in some aspect, which brings us to what we actually do. <laughs> and that is by still generating snarks in parallel, like the, like the way I explained, but progressing this, this tree over multiple blocks and not in a single block, right? So I have another illustration. Let's consider, let's say just four transactions in, in a block, and in, in the first block, you just add four transactions, and there's no proof, all right? You just, you've just added four transactions and, and send the block. And in the second block, 
you do the same thing. You add four transactions, but what you also do is that you generate proofs and you stick those proofs into that tree, right? Because, and why you can do it? Because you, you've had enough time bef to kind of generate these proofs, right? You didn't have to wait for that, uh, to j you didn't have to wait for that time um, to get these proofs, and, and so that, that kind of works out, right? Cool. And what this does is that now you need to, you need to generate, um, the, you need to kind of merge these two, which means you need to compose those two proofs. The next step. So that's, that's like the job that you need to do on that tree, right? Now when the third block comes, you add four transactions. And then what you do is you generate proofs for those two and you generate proofs for the previous transaction that were added in the previous node, right? This sort of generates new things that you need to prove, which is merging these two proofs and merging all the four um, proofs. And in the fourth block, in the fourth block, you add four transactions and you prove, you generate the proof, merge proof of these two. And then you prove the other merge proofs and then you generate you generate snarks for, for the transactions applied. This again generates new things that you need to snark, but what you actually see here is that this tree is complete now, right? In block four, you have, you have a proof for transactions that were added in block one. So you, you, you basically didn't wait for the entire tree to be built, you moved on, but then at some point you got a proof and then I'm like, okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to consider this to be proved and I'm going to accept that as my um, database because I have a proof for that now. That's the proof. <laughs> and so fifth block comes and then you do the same thing. You, have, you stick the proof for uh, the final proof for the second tree and, and then subsequent proofs and then it sort of says, hey, you need to do these uh, generate proofs for these new statements. What it did is that generate proofs for the second tree. Now I have a proof which says I can get to database one, to database two, database two. I have a proof that says all these transactions have been applied to database two. Okay, and I can accept that, verify that, and be sure that they were in fact applied. Cool, and this goes on and on, and that's how you get the entire transaction snark, right? So a block now, Earlier, a block looked like, looked like this because it had the entire transaction snark, but now you don't anymore have the entire transaction snark because you're still constructing them as, as you produce new blocks. So what you have is this staging area which says, hey, there are a few trees that, that's, still going, that's still constructing some snarks, and as in when it, it emits something out, it emits a transaction snark out of one of those trees, you say, okay, now I'm ready to accept that state of the DB and I'll update uh, that state of the DB into my blockchain state. Okay, so it still takes um, C times log N, but it's not done in one block, right? It's kind of spread across multiple blocks. And therefore you can increase your throughput even further because you, don't, you no longer wait for even C times log N. But what it also does is create this opportunity for collaboratively generating proofs, right? So you, you, you saw in the blockchain previously, in the block you have this tree which is, which is spread to the entire network. Everybody knows those uh, trees and so they know what, what transactions have been applied and what is to be proved. And so you don't have to do it, you don't have to generate the transaction snark yourself. Anybody in the network can sort of generate the transaction snark and it's available to be used. So it, it's an opportunity to kind of collaboratively generate snarks for the computations. All right, so what we did is parallelized the process of generating snarks and achieve high throughput and also create this collaborative environment where anybody can generate snarks and send it across, yeah.